Hello, dearies. This is Alpha Omega Hello, Production dearie. Review. Hello. Uh, hello, <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, can't do it for a yeah, long. we can't. We can't. It's okay. <laughs> I know right. I got it. Welcome to another review here on the channel. Um, and we thought we'd do something a little bit special, not knowing that this movie actually turned thirty this year. But you know, it's November, and Thanksgiving's around the corner. And to suffer the theme of uh, family, uh, which we'll do another review of later down the road, I decided to review a the Robin Williams movie, Mrs. Doubtfire. Now, for those who don't know what Mrs. Doubtfire is about, there is a divorced man, played by Robin Williams, who dresses as a woman to pose as a nanny to just so he could visit his kids. That woman being the British nanny, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. Now, I remember seeing a Broadway version of uh, this. A Broadway it's, a, it's actually quite funny, I will admit. I did not know there was a Broadway version. Yeah, it's actually really good. Um, and we all like Robin Williams. Uh, I, we think he's like a, easily one of the best actors to come from our generation, I'd say. May he rest in peace. May he rest in peace, yep. Uh, and I think a lot, of people, a lot of people see this as one of the movies that they recognize with Robin Williams. And you can see why. He definitely brings a lot of energy to ooh, this performance. And I think it's safe to say that any movie that Robin Williams has done, whether it be Good Will Hunting, Fisher King, Aladdin, or even Mrs. Doubtfire, or heck, let's throw Jumanji in there. He can nail it with little to no problem. One of the things I'm impressed, because I, I, I realized this as the movie was wrapping up, I never saw this all the way through. I've seen most of the movie, but there were like scenes here and there that I hadn't seen. Like, a lot of the court stuff I hadn't seen before. It was so surreal. Anyways. Um, I also want to point out, this is a pretty big cast. Sally Field as um, the wife. Yep. Pierce Brosnan as boyfriend. Uh, Mara Wilson is one of the children. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a pretty big cast. And a lot of these people went on to other stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, Robin Williams is the, is like the star of this film. It's all about him. He's the focus. It's that dual personality, that cutesy comedy feel to it. And it is very touching. Um, especially where the whole his the whole arc ends up um with his character. Yeah, and uh in a way, like, you know, yes, this this uh this whole these whole antics of him dressing up as a woman to see his children, it's a bit unorthodox. I guess you could say, but he's not doing it in like an awful way. He's just doing it because he wants to spend time with his kids. He clearly loves them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And there's so much good stuff in this movie. Alexa, is there anything you want to uh, add? Also, let me also point out is that he is. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think another thing is how at the time, like this was the um, 93. Um, I wasn't around then, but I know for a fact that times weren't maybe culturally the same as now. So it's yeah. like straight, man, famous actor, and that was kind of a trailblazer moment in cinema. I think a little bit. I've seen this before. Oh, no, this like Robin in like, and the, the guy was a great actor. He was trained well. The fact that he pulled this off without getting like you know some kind of well, Karen talk about it is well, pretty impressive. Also the time period too. Like yes. people weren't really thinking about stuff back then. You also, you know, it's like, you know, so that was a lot of makeup you had to put on for the role. Also, that makeup effect is really good. I was scared going in that this would not hold up at all. This would be dated. Yeah. It's amazing. No. One of the things I love about it is that there are moments in this William in this movie where Robin Williams has to be not his over the top funny self. He has to be very like um, is have his manners. He has to be very slow moving, um, very proper. While in the makeup, and he pulls it off really well. I, I think a lot of that energy of, a lot of that spontaneity and energy he has, 
in other movies had to be moved into working through this makeup. And we all know some actors cannot work well in makeup. Yes, and also usually on sets they have a set muscle um, yeah. specialist for each actor or actress, but all of them have the same training or technique that is applicable to them. It reminds me of an argument I heard comparing the live action Dr. Seuss movies. Yeah, I can see that. Even though like, those aren't good movies, I think we all agree those are bad movies, right? I never saw them. Yeah, some, some of them are. Others, yeah, I think, true. are passable. Yeah, yeah well, I'm not talking about two specific ones. The Grinch, the live action Grinch with Jim Carrey and the Cat in the Hat. Right. Yeah, that yeah. one, I was, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the Cat in the Hat is the worst of these. And not to knock Mike Myers in the role of the cat. I, I, I like Mike Myers in other movies. I think he's a great actor. But he could not really work well in that makeup. And that really limited what he could do with the role. And also, I've seen him and hurt the movie in yeah. the process. The guy's like, you better assume. It's like, somebody once told me this role is gonna roll. Anyways, me. but going off that point, Jim Carrey as the Grinch, yep. even though I don't like that movie, I think it's a bad movie. Weird. He was able to like move around and he had the energy and the spontaneity like Robin yeah, Williams. He, does. Had his whole like, he was able to work well as the Grinch. Everyone else just looked really bad. And also, it's funny. Whoville is actually um based in East Hampton, which you can see from the Mount Tom, um, like one of the um reservation, which is you can drive from my house. So I actually Anyways, know focus is on Mrs. Doubtfire. Let's get back to Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah. Overall, we really enjoy this, and um, like. Uh, Mm. Trying to think, like, what else can we uh, uh it's, say very, here? it's just well put together. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's heartfelt. Um, I think the so also another thing. Um, I, I another YouTuber once called it the lie revealed cliche, hmm. where a character um is like a main character is like deceiving everyone else. And their deception catches up with them, and then there's like this moping period before everything's forgiven. Yeah, that's the point. I, I, I get where that's coming from. I I don't like that cliche myself either. So when I or I see it being set up in a movie, I get very wary of it. Yeah, another Robin Williams film that did this well was The Birdcage. I'm not going to go too much. Yeah, into that, they do yeah. something I revealed there, and on my first time watching it, I was scared it was going to be uh, just. And I would not enjoy it, but because a situation forces the characters to be so isolated and close together, it worked there, and I can enjoy the movie much better on repeat viewings. I think and again, we do get lie revealed here. He's deceiving everyone by posing as this woman. But also, I know there's some tropes that I think could be in film and stuff, or like maybe like, um, like um, you know screwed the pooch because honestly just the way the character like Danny acts as a thought as a parent in cross-dressing as a woman is kind of a bunch of a, a bunch of tropes in and of itself like no it's I'm trying yeah there's a lot of stuff um I will admit I think a couple jokes did not work well in this movie I think some jokes have not aged well not today yeah. uh, they would fly but another thing I wanted to uh mention that I remember you guys talking about while we were watching the uh um uh, movie um is that uh, not only is Daniel like you know gang being able to spend time with his kids, but really we see him grow as a character because at the beginning he's kind of reckless and irresponsible, but we actually we really see him like you know get better, yeah, which is a great arc for his character. Like, um, yeah. Um. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Alexa, you said you drew me as Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes, I really... did. Now we can actually see better. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you. I, become, I, I become Mrs. Doubtfire, dearies. Like I said, oh, no. moon shape, not moon shape, like crescent face shape. Guess which one is easier to draw. <laughs> can you send that to me sometime? And honestly, whenever I'm drawing you know, reviews, it makes me want to draw because it just energy's really good. Alexa, can you send that drawing to me yeah, I can send it to you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. All right. So, yeah, we really like this movie. Is there anything else you guys wanted to add? I think you noticed in the start of the movie when there was like this chaotic party 
aftermath with like some of the angels with animals. Around. Oh yeah. I was like, it's a sign. It's a sign. A sign that like a chaos is about to ensue and everything. Exactly. Yeah. There actually was a little bit of foreshadowing. I you feel like where the kids are watching a movie and the the person's like taking off what appears to be like some kind of mask. Yeah. Yep. Which was actually kind of cool. Yeah. So should we talk about what we want to do next time? Um, sure. Joseph, you want to take it away? We're going to roll some dice. Yeah, and we might be dice. locked in the dungeon. I will yep. put the key to the dungeon so we'll go to the But this actually will be a lot of fun, and uh, I will admit. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll, I'll save the surprise for later. All right. Uh, so, so uh, uh, until next time, you guys want to give your closing uh, line? Good morning, Vietnam! Oh, wait, wrong movie. No, you ruined the mood. What <laughs> number dear? dear? Hello, dear. Watch your mouth, young man. That's really the best I could come up with. <laughs>